I'm David Smith and this is Valley Mole, the show that digs in and around Silicon Valley, searching for insights into technology news stories, the patent wars, and the business of startups. HTC's loss to Apple in the patent wars has cast out on the S3 graphics acquisition by HTC, which was thought to be primarily for HTC to gain access to S3 graphics patent portfolio and use that in a counterclaim against Apple. Now that that's failed, Bloomberg Businessweek and others are implying that HTC should have bought the patents from S3 and not bought the whole company. Now the question here is, can you sell the patents? Could S3 sell the patents to HTC? and then later sell the company. What is the effect of an M&A exit for a patent holding startup company like S3 after they've sold the patents? Is it possible to sell the patents and then sell the business? Well, as, as we'll see, the answer really depends on the scope of the license back. Now a license back is common in virtually all the patent sale transactions involving small startup companies. And it allows the seller of the patents to continue to make and sell products practicing the patented inventions. It's usually structured as a license. It could be structured as a covenant not to sue for infringement. Uh, basically, the buyer is saying we will not sue you, the seller, for infringing these patents we've acquired from you when you're selling your own products that practice these patented inventions. Now, case law says that a covenant now runs with the patents. So when the patents are subsequently sold, the license back goes with the patents and a covenant not to sue goes with the patents as well. So a covenant and a license back are very similar. Uh, the attitude of the typical patent buyers is that licenses back to the seller are okay when the transferability of the license is controlled, as we'll see. So the buyer is essentially acquiring the rights to assert the patents against the whole world, except for the patent seller. Now, as long as the license back is not transferable, then the license back is okay with most buyers. And in fact, almost all the transactions we see of this type do involve some form of license back. Uh, the issue is that the license back must not interfere with the patent buyer's ability to assert the patents against other infringers. So the question all comes down to the transferability of the license. Now, the seller is provided with a license back, the patent seller, and the transferability of the license back is what comes into question and what is heavily negotiated by the parties. Um, a sub-license by the seller, so the buyer provides the seller with a license to practice the inventions in their own products. The buyer does not provide the seller with a right to sublicense those patents to others. Um, otherwise, this would really detract from the whole value of the patents. They would be virtually impossible to sell. There are some situations where large, powerful corporate sellers will re uh, provide a sublicensable license back, and we're going to talk about that in a subsequent valley mole. But generally, sublicense rights to the seller are out of the question. Um, the transferability of the license back is also out of the question, except in the case of an acquisition of the patent seller. Now, the issue to resolve in an acquisition of the patent seller is how do we distinguish a genuine acquisition of the seller's business from an acquisition of a patent license 
in order to escape assertion. How is this achieved? The scenario is the patent buyer goes out, takes the patents, asserts them against an infringer. The infringer looks at the patent acquirer and says, you know, maybe I can buy a license from you. Yes, that's what you want. Alternatively, why don't I just go and, and acquire the original patent seller because they have a license and I can then gain that license from them. So how do we restrict that? Now, the approaches are you can restrict the license to currently licensed products. So basically, the acquirer of the patents provides the license back to the seller and says, your license back is limited to the products that you sell. Uh, so you can't go and then license the license back to other uh, products uh, that are, when the company is acquired, the license is still restricted to the products that, you, that were sold by the patent seller. Now, another thing you could do is restrict the license to current product shipment levels. And we do see this. So if a patent uh, seller um, has shipment levels of about this level when they sell the patents, then they sell the company to an acquirer and the shipment levels of, of uh, products that are practicing the inventions shoots right up to here that will be blocked by this type of restriction in the license. So the patent buyer does often restrict the product shipment levels uh, for the seller and the license in the license back. Now another approach is to have a one-time transfer. So the acquirer provides the seller with a license back to uh, transfer in acquisition, but only once. A subsequent acquisition would not carry a license to the products. I don't really understand why this works for the seller and why it's a good option for the buyer, but it, we do see these sometimes in these transactions. Um, now, a more sensible approach might be to restrict the acquirer to, of the uh, company to being a acquirer that is not facing assertion from the patent holder. So the patent seller sells the patents to the patent buyer. The patent buyer goes and asserts the patents against an infringer. That infringer then looks to acquire the patent seller in order to gain the license. That type of maneuver would be blocked with this type of restriction that says you can sell your company to an acquirer as long as that acquirer is not subject to assertion from, patent, from the patent acquirer. That's something that might make sense. Of course, we also see combinations of all the above uh, restrictions when we're looking at the transferability of the license back in a patent uh, M&A transaction, uh, in a merger and acquisition transaction of a patent seller. Um, of course, an unrestricted transfer is not li likely because it will defeat the patent acquirer's ability to assert the patents um, once they have acquired them. Um, so, a license back is common. Transferability in an acquisition is often a topic of negotiation. The key is to avoid an interference with the buyer's rights to assert the patent. Because when they're buying the patents, that's basically the right they're acquiring, the right to assert the patents against the whole world, except for the patent seller. So yes, you can sell the patents and then sell the company in two separate transactions to different buyers. But the patent buyer will insist that the company acquisition is genuine and it's not merely an alternative route to a patent license. we like to thank the sponsors of Valley Mole. Tynex, the full service patent broker operating the world's largest patent and technology trading exchange. SVBS Silicon Valley Business School, providing unique educational materials and resources to students and teachers of entrepreneurship and technology commercialization. 
and valuemypattern.com. The only place to go for rapid, realistic patent appraisals.